On this week's episode of Ride the Lightning, the Tesla unofficial podcast, Tesla reaches their big goal of producing 5,000 Model 3s in one week. A new bill could restore the $7,500 federal EV tax credit for the next decade. UK Tesla fans get their first official chance to check out the Model 3 and more. Howdy friends, Ryan McCaffrey with you for the 153rd edition of Ride the Lightning. It is the Tesla unofficial podcast for July 8th, 2018. To my left, sprawled out across just about the entire couch, is Daisy the Boxer Puppy. I hope all of you uh, in the USA had a very happy, healthy, safe 4th of July holiday. I ended up just taking it pretty easy. We were down at my brother-in-law's house. For he lives uh, further down the peninsula south of San Francisco, where the weather's a bit warmer and the skies are a bit clearer for fireworks, although we ended up just hanging out of their house and uh, not really doing fireworks. Although what's cool is every year we do that, and we've done that the last few years, it seems like we time it just right, where when we leave their house, as we're coming back up north towards San Francisco, you get all kinds of little firework shows on either side of the 101 freeway as you're coming up. So it's a, it's kind of a neat little weird accidental uh, fireworks tradition, I guess we've found our way into. Uh, and by the way, a belated happy Canada Day to my friends up north. A quick programming note for you. A uh, thing here, I'm recording early. It's Thursday night as I'm recording because I forgot up until about Wednesday, at least as far as the podcast was concerned. I was like, oh, right. I have tickets to a show with my wife on Friday night, which is my usual night. And I figured, well, I'd rather record early than a little later so that the Patreon folks can get their, get their ears on it. Plus, it is, you know, we did have the holiday in the middle of the week. So I thought, well, news might be a bit slower than usual. And it kind of has. There have got some good stories to talk to you about here in just a minute. But uh, anyway, if I do miss something, if something goes down on Friday, I do apologize that I'll miss it for this week. But I will certainly catch it and analyze it and recap it for you next week. So with that, let me get on to the Tesla news. The big news of course, happened just after the show published last week on Sunday morning. Elon Musk announcing on Twitter the Tesla did it. They achieved their big goal. They produced 5,000 Model 3s in the final seven days of Q2. Uh, in fact, 7,000 Teslas in seven days. Those were uh, Elon's words on Twitter, which, of course, he did not mean all Model 3s. He meant 7,000 Teslas, so that is 5,000 Model 3s, 2,000 Model S and X than those, as we know. Those are about a 50-50 split. Tesla made it official the next day in a release saying, quote, Q2 production totaled 53,339 vehicles, a 55% increase from Q1, making it the most productive quarter in Tesla history by far. That is beautiful right there. That is fantastic stuff. They continue, quote, for the first time, Model 3 production at 28,578 through Q1 exceeded combined S and X production, which was 24,761. Uh, and we produced almost three times the amount of Model 3s than we did in Q1. There's that S curve, as Elon talked about well over a year ago. In fact, just uh, well, yes, a year ago, back at the launch event, he put that, that slide up of the S-curve, and here we are. We find ourselves in the, uh, in the fun part <laughs> of the S-curve. The note from Tesla continues, quote, Our Model 3 weekly production rate also more than doubled during the quarter, and we did so without compromising quality. They detail some more. GA4, which is General Assembly 4, GA4, our new General Assembly line for Model 3, was responsible for roughly 20% of Model 3s produced in those final seven days, with quality from that line being as good as our regular GA3 line. 
We expect that GA3 alone can reach a production rate of 5,000 Model 3s per week soon, but GA4 helped us to get there faster and will also help to exceed that rate. Tesla expects to, con uh, to inc increase production to 6,000 Model 3s per week by late next month. They are referring to August because this was sent out on uh, July 2nd, I believe, is when this went out. 11,166 Model 3s and 3,892 SNX vehicles were in transit to customers at the end of Q2 and will be delivered in early Q3. The high number of customer vehicles in transit for Model 3 was primarily due to a significant increase in production towards the end of the quarter. Their concluding paragraph, actually, their concluding couple of paragraphs here. The remaining net Model 3 reservation count at the end of Q2 stood at roughly 420,000, even though we have now delivered 28,386 Model 3 vehicles to date. When we start to provide customers an opportunity to see and test drive the car at their local store, we expect that our orders will grow faster than our production rate. Model 3 dual motor all-wheel drive and Model 3 dual motor all-wheel drive performance cars will also be available in our stores shortly. They sum up by saying, The last 12 months were some of the most difficult in Tesla's history, and we are incredibly proud of the whole Tesla team for achieving the 5,000 unit Model 3 production rate. It was not easy, but it was definitely worth it. A few key things I wanted to point out from this release. Number one, that is a lot of vehicles in transit, and I'm using air quotes. Uh, I know Tesla said that it was primarily due to a significant increase in production towards the end of the quarter, uh, I'm thinking more like <coughs> snatched away to avoid hitting the 200,000 th threshold. Oh, sorry. A little bit of a cough there. No. Um, but if that, you know, not to say it's, it, they could both be true. Those things can both be true. They're not mutually exclusive. So either way, that many vehicles in transit means Q3 is, go that's, that's going to be a huge boost to Q3 numbers right there. You're getting Q3 off to a, pretty significant start as far as vehicles delivered. The second big point I wanted to call out from this is the number of Model 3 reservations that remain on the books. Still 420,000 reservations. And you notice at the end there, they're effectively saying that they can expect that number to go up as the test drives start because those they expect are going to drive more demand than they can actually keep up with. So if that comes to pass, that will be pretty impressive on its own. Uh, the other, the third thing I wanted to mention here, 6,000 Model 3s per week by the end of August. That would be fantastic if they can get to that. Now, I know Elon's goal of 10,000 cars per week by the end of the year that feels like it's a bit optimistic right now based on where things have go been going. But then again, the S-curve could help them get there. I'm not sure. I mean, it's, it's certainly going to take more than... It, they're going to have to really ramp up that GA4 that they just built in order for that to happen. So we'll see how that goes. But clearly, the 5,000 car per week goal was the vital target to hit. And they have done that. So that should take the pressure off a bit moving forward, assuming that they can sustain that, which, you know, is, it remains to be seen. I'm not saying they're, it won't happen. I'm just saying that, you know, we've seen burst rates from them before. So once they're able to hit 5,000 sustained, that should take the pressure off of the entire company, off of everything a bit moving forward, because that will help drive them towards profitability in hopefully Q3, as Elon had previously outlined, and then uh, he had more definitively suggested that uh, that Q4 would be profitable. So big, big news. They got there on June 30th, just in the, the final moments of the, uh, of the quarter. In fact, there was a news report. I can't remember if it was uh, Reuters or Bloomberg, who was it? Uh, I forgot to note it down, but they said that the that it went, it took a couple hours over. It was a little past midnight towards Elon's uh, own imposed, self-imposed deadline of midnight, but they got there. 5,000 Model 3s 
in one week. Elon then sent a letter, a note to the Tesla team, which of course leaks to the media instantaneously. He said, we did it. What an incredible job by an amazing team. Couldn't be more proud to work with you. It is an honor. The level of dedication and creativity was mind-blowing. We either found a way or, by will and inventiveness, created entirely new solutions that were thought impossible. Intense, intense. That's as in production tent. Taking a little uh, little wordplay there, which I always appreciate as a, as a wordsmith myself. Transporting entire production lines across the world in massive cargo planes. There he's referring to the, the Tesla Groman, uh, a, sort of the, new, the production line for Gigafactory that we heard about some months back that was flown over. Whatever, it worked. Not only did we factory gate over 5,000 Model 3s, but we also achieved the S and X production target for a combined 7,000 vehicle week. What's more, with the widespread productivity gains throughout Tesla and the new production lines spooling up, we are on track to reach 6,000 per week for Model 3 next month. I think we just became a real car company. Thank you for your hard work and dedication, Elon. Love that. We're just, uh, I mean, that says it all. A little, little humor in there, a lot of gratitude, a lot of pride and appreciation. I mean, that's uh, just a very honest, uh, very sincere from the heart letter there. Love reading that, and I'm sure all the, uh, the employees at Tesla did as well. So on to the next step, because that means that with the 5,000 run rate hit, that was Elon's threshold for spinning up production on the all-wheel drive Model 3s, which of course will start with the performance cars. So uh, I am hoping, I guess for those of you wondering, I do not have a VIN number as of tonight, which is uh, July 5th, Thursday night, as I record this. I will certainly, I I probably would have said it right at the top (laughs) if I had, I suppose. But yeah, no VIN number yet. I am hoping it will be soon. You know, he had said, uh, what, a week or two back, I know it's, it's, it's just all blurs together, you know, he had replied to me when I asked, hey, first customer deliveries of performance, is it going to be July or is it August now? And he had said, as you recall, he had said July. So uh, I would, if, if I'm in that group and if that is still going to happen, I would think, I know it's only early in the month here, but I would think I'd need to get a VIN number fairly soon for that. So we shall see. But uh, here's to the next step, which is the introduction of the performance car and the all-wheel drive car and, you know, the white interior option, uh, you know, just some, the next sort of the next step, the next phase in uh, in Model 3 production. And then when that is up and spooling and going well, we can move on to uh, a much more critical phase of Model 3 production, which will, of course, be standard battery production. I want to move on to the next story this week now, and it is a significant one in its own right. Pluginsites.org. I want to give them their due credit here. They are reporting that Vermont Democratic House of Representatives member Peter Welch has introduced H Bill, uh, Bill HR 6274 onto the, into the U.S. House of Representatives. When what this bill would do is it would eliminate the cap on the $7,500 federal tax credit. That $200,000, uh, the production cap, I should say, not an income, there's no income cap, but just to be clear, it would get rid of that 200000 car threshold and instead extend it to an unlimited number of buyers of electric vehicles for the period of a decade, for 10 years. So here's a quote from Representative Welch. He says, quote, Transportation is the single largest contributor to greenhouse emissions in the United States. It is urgent that we transition to cleaner, more efficient modes of transportation. My legislation will make electric vehicles and their charging stations more affordable while saving Vermonters money at the gas pump and reducing their environmental footprint. We are in a race for the winner of the technology for electric vehicles, and this credit is going to help spur that, end quote. 
PluginSites.org also adds that a Senate version of this bill is expected to be filed by Senator Jeff Merkley, a Democrat from Oregon. Now, I absolutely have no interest in getting political here. Everybody has different opinions on that, but I think it's reasonably fair to say, hopefully nobody will get mad at me, uh, I think it is reasonable to say that we are in an extraordinarily hyper-partisan political environment on both sides, and uh, as such, I'm, I'm not sure how much of a chance this particular bill has of gaining Republican support, seeing as how it's being introduced and backed by uh, solely by Democrats, and obviously the Republicans are in full uh, control of the three branches of, uh, of, of our government right now. However, I will say this. The fact that this bill would benefit American car companies, even if you take Tesla out of it, and all of the drama, as he, to paraphrase, paraphrase Elon's own words, take the drama magnet that is Tesla out of that equation, and this bill, if passed, would benefit GM with the Bolt. It's going to benefit Ford and their uh, in-development EV efforts. So uh, maybe, you know, maybe this could happen. I'm, I'm certainly glad the bill has been introduced because guess what? You can't make this happen without a concrete first step. You can't run before you learn to walk. So this is a concrete first step. The introduction, it's not just talk. It is the proper introduction of legislation. So uh, I will say, considering that a large percentage of Ride the Lightning listeners, I think is very fair to say, would directly benefit from this if it passes. And, and I'm by the way, I'm not talking about just those of you who haven't taken delivery yet. You're certainly at the front lines of this, of, of the people that would stand to benefit should this bill be passed and written into law. But I'm talking as well about those of you out there who may want to get another Tesla at some point in the next 10 years. Maybe you get your Model 3 and you love it, and maybe in a few years' time, you want to get rid of your another of your cars in your household and get the Model Y, for instance. And this bill would thus benefit you in that scenario. So I think we can all agree that this is in all of our personal interests as Tesla consumers, as well as, as being something that I think many of you would would no doubt agree, would help advance Tesla's mission. So as ever, I encourage you, if you feel strongly, to contact your state's U.S. House of Representatives and Senate members to politely and respectfully but firmly vocalize your support for H.R. 6274. Next up this week... We've got uh, a special note for, it's not all about the U.S. of A. this week. To those of you in the U.K. out there, and I happen to know, uh, thankfully my metrics do show me a pretty cool breakdown of the listeners of this podcast geographically. And I know I've got a number of U.K. listeners out there. And I wanted to tip my cap to Neil in the U.K. who wrote in with this information, which I, uh, of course, not, a, not that I didn't take a word for it, but I was able to uh, get a, you know confirm this and, and uh, make sure che- I, I actually went back with Neil and got some more information as well. So wanted to pass along that uh, those of you in the UK, you have what may be your first, certainly formal chance to see Model 3 up close and in person. So Neil from the UK writes, as a reservation holder, I've just had an email from Tesla inviting me to see Model 3 at the Goodwood Festival of Speed happening next week. I'll get you those dates in a second. Over here in the UK, here you go. It's from Thursday, July 12th until Sunday, July 15th. As far as I know, it's the first time Tesla have officially had a Model 3 in Europe, uh, unless you know any different. He then, uh, Neil was kind enough to forward me the email from Tesla, just to have all the extra details. Tickets, by the way, if you're interested in attending this, range from £37 per person on Thursday to £69 per person on Sunday. Or if you want to buy an entire four-day weekend pass, £164 for that. 
So uh, I thought that was uh, something definitely worth passing along because, you know, I've taken calls from folks in Europe and, you know, you guys haven't had the chance to see these cars in anything but YouTube videos and photographs. And boy, is it, you know, it's a heck of a difference for any car to see it in person. So the Goodwood Festival of Speed. I look forward to maybe getting a, a Ride the Lightning hotline call or two from those of you who may be seeing it for the very first time. Another feature that Elon Musk appears to now be thinking about, uh, or in this specific case, thinking about once again, which I'll explain in a second, is using Teslas as generators of sorts. Someone on Twitter asked Elon, will there ever be the capability with any Tesla to connect two cars together and charge your car, if it's low or possibly dead, from another Tesla? possibly set a percentage you'd like to give the car that has died in emergency situations. Elon replied to this saying, quote, Very early on, we had the ability to use the car as a battery outputting power. Maybe worth revisiting that, end quote. Now, last week, as you remember, he said that the Tesla pickup truck will do this. It'll act as a generator of sorts for tools and things, uh, complete with uh with appropriate outlets built into the car to plug those tools into. Now it sounds like Elon may be thinking about that, extending that a bit further and perhaps across all of the Tesla line of uh, family of cars, allowing them to be used as emergency power sources. Now I remember, this reminded me, I remember way back at the Model S beta event slash factory tour. It was sort of the housewarming party shortly after Tesla acquired the Numi plant from Toyota. It was October 1st, 2011. I remember it well. I got to go with a friend of mine who was a reservation holder at the time. It was only in, open to, to reservate Model S reservation holders. And again, this is about a year before the Model S came out. Um, and I got to go, and you could, I mean, the, the, they were just this little tiny corner of the factory. It was, I, I mean, I remember it well, and it was crazy to, it's crazy to think about that now, uh, com seeing where they are now and, and having done a factory tour relatively recently and seeing how, how things have evolved and changed. But anyway, the point of that being that this, uh, this reminded me, because I was watching, I, I, I filmed and record, I recorded Elon's speech uh, that he made at that October 2011 Model S beta event. And he, I was watching it semi-recently because I've been thinking, I've been like, I've been thinking, oh, I should upload this to my, the, the Ride the Lightning YouTube channel, which has nothing on it, but I should put this up there. Just people might like to see it. But anyway, so I was wa watching it and he said something in there and I'm, I may be just paraphrasing here rather than a direct quote, but he said, Something like, the Model S has enough power to run your laptop for a year, <laughs> which which kind of got a chuckle out of the room. But you know, it's one hundred percent correct. And uh, see, so yeah, I should I should play that audio for you sometime because it's incredible how many things he said in that speech. You know, what is this? This is now July. I mean, almost seven years ago, have completely come true. And they sounded kind of nuts then, but they've totally come true. Anyway, um, so there you go. The, the Elon thinking about the idea of allowing Teslas to uh, to share juice in an emergency power situation, uh, the necessity of, of power. Finally, this week, I wanted to do a little kind of an evergreen segment. I've been waiting for a slow news week <laughs> to, to spend a few minutes on this, and I think this week counts. And I wanted to talk for a minute about uh, custom license plates, or as they are sometimes referred to, vanity license plates. I don't really like the, the description vanity license plates because it implies that they're purely for egotistical purposes, and I don't really think they are. I think, I think most vanity plates are for fun, not, for, not to uh, fuel one's ego. But uh, I'll say, you know, some people I know just... They, some people do not like vanity plates. They're just not, they don't like custom plates. They just, they, they do find them in any context, uh, a little, you know, self, uh, 
evangelizing, for lack of a better term. I don't know. But then again, a lot of people, of which I count myself, like to use custom plates as a, a just a, a fun expression for cars that we love. And I'll note, too, that in many states, including California, the yearly fees for those custom, those personalized license plates go to a charity, a charitable uh, intent, a charitable organization of some sort. So here is how I like to think about them, uh, because I, I have been contemplating, I have not <laughs> contemplating, it's like a, a gentle way of putting it. I want to do one on my Model 3, and it will probably surprise none of you that I am crazy enough that I actually have an entire Google Doc that I just add to anytime I have an idea for one. Uh, that I just and it's this huge list. Most of them are terrible, by the way. But that's the point: is to try and find good ones. So I wanted to just do a quick little segment here about my own personal uh, call them rules for personalized license plates. Now, these apply only to me. I'm not suggesting in any way that you adopt them, that you that they apply to anyone but me. But these are sort of my own personal standards for what a personalized license plate should should uh, achieve. Number 1, it's got to be clearly understood very quickly. I've seen so many plates to me, nothing defeats the purpose of a personalized plate more than a license plate that's just indecipherable, where it's I just I stare at it and I'm like I have no idea what you're trying to say. So I think a, a personalized plate should be quickly and clearly understood. Rule number two: the more layers of meaning you can add to it, the better. So whether that's a pun, whether that's something like a, f- a popular phrase that applies to the car or is somehow a a play on words with the car. I'll give you an example of uh, an idea I had for a plate that I actually ended up giving to a friend of mine because this is a, this is a, I hope he doesn't, I'm not going to say his name, but I hope he doesn't mind me saying this on the air. Uh, I won't even say what state he's in, but this, this plate idea, it's specific to the Model X and now I'm like building it up too much. You're going to be like, that's it. It's not that good. <laughs> but this is a Model X specific plate. And I'm probably never going to be able to own a Model X. So I gave this to a friend of mine. X wing it. Right? Because it's you've got the Model X play on words. You've got the Falcon Wing reference in there. You've got a Star Wars reference in there. And number four, layer meaning layer number four, just the old, you know, kind of... Just that old phrase, oh, just wing it, you know, just which, which, you know, you're in a fun car. Like, yeah, just go for a drive. Just, just wing it. We're, oh, where are we going in our Model X? I don't know. Let's wing it. So I love X wing it. And if you want to take it, if you have a Model X out there and it's available in your state, I encourage you to take it because it's fun. Why not? Uh, rule number three for Ryan McCaffrey's personal rules of personalized license plates it can't just be whatever the car is. I, I find that to be a waste of everyone's time. <laughs> there is a, a car that I see uh, on my route, my, my sort of regular commute route. It's a Infiniti G35 sedan. And the plate is G35 space SDN. Thanks, buddy. Why was I didn't know that? <laughs> I couldn't tell. So I'm not I'm not a big fan of those. Uh, and then rule number four, my own personal rules. I'm not personally a fan of doing anything that's sort of aggressive or in sort of in your face, kind of like a like a thing. So I uh, you know I'm not into you know faster than you or, you know, that kind of thing. That's obviously way too long. But so I'm going to give you some examples uh, from my list that, again, you're welcome to because these are all ones that I that I liked. You may hate them and that's fine, but uh, that I liked that uh, are already taken 
in cap. Actually, a couple of these aren't taken, but they didn't quite make my cut. But the, the yeah, so I'm just gonna give you a few. Then most of these are just taken in California. So one I super liked is, and this is assuming, by the way, that you have a, you have seven characters to work with. I know there are occasionally places that have eight, which <laughs> more power to you. I wish I had eight here, but uh, I really like Electquick. So you know you've got just that word play of quick and electric fits for it fits a Tesla very well, right? So E L E Q U I K, very cool. I like it's, ta it's taken here. If that's by the way, if that's someone in my audience, thumbs up to you for thinking of that first. Uh, for those of you now, this is too many characters to work with a P one hundred D, but if you have a P eighty five D or a P ninety D, S or X. How about P90 Wee, W-H-E-E, -E, so P90 Wee. So it's, you know, a fun little blend, a uh, little fun little play on, uh, on the car's uh, name with, while invoking that sense of fun and, and quickness that a performance Tesla has. Uh, Gas X, E-X, as in, you know, you've broken up, but also obviously a, a uh, anti- <laughs> bloating anti-gas medicine. Just, you know, put a smile on somebody's face if they see that. Uh, one that my wife came up with, which I love, but it's taken in California, so she gets credit for this one. Icebreaker. I-C-E-B-R-K-R, -E which, of course, is a fun, would be really fun on a P3D or obviously a P100D S or X, but I, b the... Because, of course, your average, most people are going to look at that and go, oh, icebreaker, like, oh, maybe he's like a, he likes to have, have conversations at parties and talk to people. Like, they're, they might scratch their head a little bit, but, you know, then EV owners, people, people that are, uh, you know, plugged in, phrasing, to the electric car world will go, oh, okay, yeah, I, ICE, internal combustion engine, qu yeah, so, right, that's a good one. I had to tip my cap. I love that one so much. I ran to the DMV website where you can check to see if these are available, the California one. And it was taken. I was like, oh, because that was that one that was so good. I, I would have taken that one. Uh, and then you could always go something a little more sentimental, like thanks Elon, THX space E-L-O-N. You could go that way too. So uh, I'm rambling a bit now. I want to get to the Ride the Lightning Hotline, but I just thought... I thought I would share a few of those and share, again, my own insane thinking with this stuff. This is, this is what I do all day, all week, people. This is why, <laughs> I guess this is why I do a Tesla podcast, because I'm thinking about this kind of stuff all the time. But uh, if you have good plate ideas, by the way, please email them to me. I would love more good ideas. Uh, teslapodcast at gmail.com. You know, maybe depending on how many responses I get, maybe we should all start like a, a crowdsourced Google spreadsheet where people can just put in good ideas and there could be like a ride the lightning community, you know, custom uh, personalized license plate idea. I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe that, maybe that would, maybe somebody would just come in and ruin it. I don't know. But in any case, uh, I hope you enjoyed the last <laughs> five minutes there, however long that segment was. I've been uh, I've been marinating on that one for a while. I was like, all right, I think this is the week to break out the the custom license plate segment. All right, uh, as usual, plenty of great ride the lightning calls lined up for you. We're going to cover a ton of topics from uh, the badging, the reaction to the the dual motor and performance badging from Model Three that was. Uh, uh, and, and, you know, revealed just recently, we're going to talk about vegan steering wheel. We're going to talk about uh, transporting your dog in a Tesla and how to protect those seats. Lots of things for you right after this. All right, here we go with the Ride the Lightning Hotline. As always, I highly encourage you to participate Give me a call with your question, comment, discussion topic, anything you want to talk about in the world of Tesla. Two easy ways to participate. One, use your smartphone's built-in voice recorder to record a question. Please try to keep it to about a minute, minute and a half tops if you can. Most people have been great about that. Uh, and email that file to me at the email address I gave out a few minutes ago, which is 
teslapodcast at gmail.com. Or uh, as something maybe a little bit more convenient, there's the Ride the Lightning hotline. You just call the toll-free number and leave a message. That's all you got to do. That toll-free number is available 24-7, and it is 1-888-989-8752. That's 1-888-989-TSLA. And of course, if you know someone special with an upcoming birthday, anniversary, graduation, or some other special occasion, you can give them a unique gift of recorded voices from friends and family telling them why they're special. The recordings can be podcasted or put onto a keepsake. Visit lifeonrecord.com to learn more. Let's kick it off with Carl in Arlington, Texas. He likes the dual motor badging that uh, seems to be, I don't want to say ruffling a few feathers, but maybe uh, not necessarily immediately beloved by everybody that's seen it for the Performance Model 3. So, Carl, tell me about it. Hi, Ryan. This is Carl Stone in Arlington, Texas. Um, I have a, a Model 3 reserved, listen to your show all the time. But um, So I just wanted to comment on the dual motor tag for the Model 3. I think that it's a great idea because no ICE car can say they have a dual motor. That's something only electric cars can have. Anyway, that's just my two cents. Love your show. Thanks. Bye. Well, Carl, your point is well taken, and in fact, you got me thinking about this. So I came up with an idea for what maybe is a better badge. Maybe you'll agree, maybe you'll disagree. And by the way, I should caveat this, I doubt that this is going to get changed, at least not anytime soon. But here you go. Here's my idea. I would be very eager to hear people's feedback on this, good or bad. If you don't, just just don't be mean, but <laughs> be constructive if you don't like it. Uh, so here's my idea for a Model 3 badge. Standard battery doesn't get a badge, okay? Long range, just rear-wheel drive long range, so the first production cars, they get on the, the lower right side, you know, right where the, right where the badges go on, uh, on S and X, they get the original three horizontal lines Model 3 logo. Not the word model, just the three horizontal lines. So just the three, that that uh, triple horizontal line. Dual motor gets that same thing, the same three horizontal line symbol, but the bottom bar of those three bars is black to sort of signify an underline. Like, okay, there's this is a dual motor car and double meaning. Remember my license plate thing. The two remaining bars, the two remaining silver bars above that underline uh, can basically indicate two motors. You've got one, two, and then the underline. So I think that's kind of cool. That kind of works. And then you probably see where I'm going with this. The performance model three could be the same thing, except instead of a black bottom bar, it could be red. So I like that. I think it's fun. I think it's a little like a little mysterious to the to the untrained eye. Like what is what does that badge mean? But it's kind of like cool insider code for Tesla fans. But I just wonder, I wonder if Adidas would try to sue Tesla about it again. Because that's why they changed to the Arabic number three from that that triple horizontal line symbol in the first place. So, I mean, I could see why Adidas might do that because of, you know, trying to do brand the whole car that way. But if they're just using it as a badge, maybe that could clear them legally. I don't know. I have, I'm, I have zero legal training. I have no idea, but anyway, what do you guys think? That's my idea for what maybe could be a, a cooler, simpler Model 3 badge. Let's go next to Eric in Aiken, South Carolina. Uh, he wanted to take Tesla up on something that was mentioned on a recent shareholder call. Eric, what have you got? Hi, Ryan. This is Eric from Aiken, South Carolina again. I had a question. I was hoping to get your opinion. So I'm interested in getting a configuration with the synthetic leather on the steering wheel instead of the regular and I remember at the last shareholders meeting, someone had asked this question, and Franz's response was that they do offer that uh, kind of off-menu. Well, I just placed my order for the P3D, 
and I called the local service center and they told me that that was only offered on the S and the X and checked with their manager and everything. So now I'm not sure what to do. Um, so do you have any advice of where I could go from here? Eric, congratulations on your order. So, uh, by the way, I said shareholder call. I meant shareholder meeting. Sorry about that. To try and help you here, Eric, uh, there is nothing I can immediately say or do, but I do offer this one method that will hopefully get you somewhere positive. I would call Tesla's customer service number on this and explain your situation to them. The number is one 888 Five one eight three seven five two. So, like I said, I, I would call and explain it. And if you can't get clear information out of them, I would politely ask for a manager to uh, just explain to them what you'd like, what was said by Elon and Franz at that shareholder meeting, and uh, to you know just that you're this is what you'd like on your car, and it's been stated as something that's offered. So, you know, is there a way to, to please make that happen for your order? So I wish you luck, Eric. Thanks for calling in. Let's go now to Andrew in Florida who wanted to call in in response. Uh, you remember I mentioned that hammock that I bought that I haven't had a chance to test out yet for carrying Daisy in the back seat of my future Model 3. Andrew's got something he likes, and he's going to tell us about it. Andrew, the floor is yours. Hey, Ryan. This is Andrew, formerly of San Diego, now of New Smyrna Beach, Florida. I'm calling uh, actually about one primary uh, call from your previous show, but actually kind of will touch on another topic and another topic that's unrelated that's pretty cool. Uh, so mainly I'm calling about the uh, issue of Daisy the Boxer Puppy and countless other dogs, obsessed owners out there that uh, want to take them in their cars but are worried about uh, messing up the wonderful seating and and the uh, appointments and so forth. So um, I have over 20,000 miles on my car and all of those with a dog. I got a puppy uh, last early last year before I, right before I got my Tesla. And uh, yes, I drive a lot of miles, by the way. Uh, and I have used a what is called a good to go. So it's good number two go a one word. Uh, you can search on Amazon. Uh, auto booster seat is what it's called. Good to go auto booster seat runs about 50 bucks on Amazon. And it looks like kind of a, a big kind of rectangular box open, of course, at the top. It's got kind of a kind of a lambskin feeling. I think, think it's synthetic. It might be vegan. I don't know. Uh, but it's very soft inside uh, and it's removable on the inside so you can wash it. Um, so it's comfortable inside for the dog. And there's a little uh, belt with a clip that clips onto your dog's collar or harness so it keeps your dog safe. As you mentioned, your hammock, I don't, it doesn't sound like it's going to keep your, keep your dog safe, Daisy or Maggie or whomever. So that's the other part to consider. So uh, you can clip your dog in uh, with that to the box, to the little booster seat, keeps them kind of high up so they can see outside. And that, of course, clips your seat belts. Um, and it just sits on your seat. And I have white seating on my leather, uh, <laughs> on my Tesla, um, which goes to the other call that came in. And even with my dog and driving all these miles, I just drove cross country moving from San Diego to Florida. And uh, everything's perfect, uh, looks great. And again, with, with my dog inside the booster seat, it keeps him, you know, his um, uh, fur that's, that's shed and so forth from getting in the car for the most part. And no scratches on the seat, of course, because he's inside this, this booster seat. And most importantly, he's safe. You know, besides the whole thing about our cars, we want to take care of our animals and he's safe. So, um, and then again, the other thing, again, the white seating looks great. It's held up well. I just use a rag with simple green or alcohol. It's easy to wipe off spills. And I'm in my car a lot, and all the miles. Anyways, take care, Ryan. Keep up the good work. Andrew, thank you for that recommendation. And also glad to hear that you made it cross country safely on your big move. So uh, I will look into that uh, particular carrying thing that, that uh, you described there. Also, I did wanted to mention, too, just with regard to that hammock that I did buy, uh, I, I, sh I should have mentioned this. I didn't. I could see how you might be, <laughs> not that you were, like, mad at me or anything, but uh, you were like, well, you know, you want to keep the dog safe. I, I already have a chest harness that I had for Maggie that uh, straps onto the dog like a, just kind of like a, like a vest, basically, and then it has a thing that hooks like a... a um, Gosh, I, I don't know anything about these terms, but like the like those hooks that mountain climbers use, uh, it 
like the O-ring thing, I guess, would, would that be the right term? Anyway, uh, that that hooks into the, uh, another harness on the seat belt. So um, it, there, there is a, I do keep the dog safe and secure on uh, when, she, when she's in the car. So that could totally work in conjunction with this hammock that I bought because the hammock supports, it has slits for, for so you can plug seat belts in and humans can sit on top of it. Uh, so again, I haven't used it yet. I will give it a shot once uh, once the Model 3 arrives. But there you go. Daisy's definitely not loose in the car, and I'm curious to see how this thing works. But I have noted that good-to-go thing that you mentioned as well. So if uh, I may have to look into that too. Thank you very much, Andrew. And we're going to Andy uh, from San Diego, who uh, wants to talk about a paint question. I do like these kinds of questions. I'm not a paint expert, but... Um, this, I like being able to just do a little research on my own and learn stuff. So, uh, Andy helped me do just that this week and he is on the air now. Hi, Ryan. This is Andy from San Diego. I'm a day one model three reservation holder and just actually placed my order. Uh, now that Tesla is uh, offering the obsidian black metallic paint option on the model three, uh, I do have a paint question for you today. Is there any difference between the multi-coat and metallic paint that Tesla uses? And uh, specifically, do you know how many coats of paint are included in the metallic option versus the multi-coat? Um, and is one more durable than the other? Thanks again for all that you do. I've been getting some mixed uh, answers from the sales team uh, in stores and from the uh, Tesla uh, corporate headquarter number. So anything you can do to clear that up would be great. Appreciate everything that you do. See ya. Andy, first of all, thank you for calling in and keeping San Diego atop the unofficial leaderboards for city with the highest number of calls to this podcast. Uh, anyway, to answer your question, I don't actually know the number of coats in each. I tried to find it, but what I was definitively able to find from just impression after impression, you are going to see more depth to the paint uh, with those, if you choose either of the two multi-coat options, if that makes sense, if depth makes sense, um, which I think it does. I think it will. Uh, now, theoretically, it'd be a bit more durable, but, I mean, a rock's still going to get it. I mean, it's just a question of if it gets, I guess, how big the rock is and if it gets all the way through or just gets through one of the coats. But um, paint protection film is going to go a lot further for either one, should you elect to do that. I will add, though, that um, by many accounts, including when I talked to Jeff at Immaculate Reflections about this during my visit to his shop a, a month or so back, multi-coat paint can be harder to repair if a panel needs repainting because it can be tougher to match that original factory multi-coat finish. So I... I I'm going in eyes wide open with my multi-coat red on that. Uh, so now you have that information as well. I hope that helps. Let's go next to Frey in Belgium. Uh, wanted to, he has a, has a particular question that I think I can help with here. So Frey, you're on the air. Hey Ryan, it's Frey from Belgium. I don't know yet if you've seen the articles, pictures and videos recently of the almost a thousand model trees spotted on a parking lot. Uh, but one thing I noticed about that, and I haven't seen much talk about, is that there are a lot of white Model 3s with doors of another color. I see white cars with black, uh, red, or blue doors. What's up with that? Is that a way to produce cars faster? Is that something that's done by other car manufacturers as well? Do you or one of your listeners have some insight on this, please? Best of regards, Frey. So I think I can explain this, Frey, and it is, it is a rather simple explanation, fortunately. Most of the cars are wrapped with a white protective material, except it's not the entire car. They tend to leave the doors, uh, which obviously show the actual paint colors, it's, and it's so they can easily get in and out and operate the doors. So that's, I think, where you're seeing that color discrepancy. And the, Tesla does this for cars that are in transit. In fact, I think pretty much every car maker does this in some fashion or another. If you do a Google image search for Teslas in transit, you should find photos of Teslas on trucks that are going to show this, show what I'm talking about better than the, the overhead drone shots 
of that big parking lot, which I happen to know exactly the picture you're referring to. So I hope that helps. Thanks so much for calling in. Next up, we've got Billy Joe in Virginia uh, who has a paint protection question uh, of sorts. Billy, go ahead. Hey, Ryan, this is Billy Joe from Mannequin, Virginia. I'm super excited about getting my Model 3 dual motor that I ordered in silver metallic. I'm curious what you would choose to do as the first thing to protect the coating long-term and why. Uh, I heard you talk about ceramic coating and paint correction, and there just seem to be so many options. I was hoping you could help clarify that for me. Look forward to hearing your response. Thank you for everything you're doing. Billy Joe, thank you so much for your call. So in my humble opinion, and again, as we learned when Jeff from Immaculate Reflections was here, and as you noted in your call, there are so many options here. But if I had to, if I personally had to pick one thing to start with, and I do, in fact, for my own car, I would start with paint protection film over the entire front end and including the hood of the car. I learned this the hard way on the car that I just sold, where I only had the film on the nose of the car because when I bought the car in 2000, early January 2006, that was, nobody did like the whole hood or or more than that, unless you were just like a, a bottomless pocketed, you know, exotic car owner. So the, just that nose was sort of the standard and and the film on my old car went about a quarter of the way up the hood or so. And oh, by the time I sold the car, there were a lot, a lot of rock chips that had hit higher up the hood past the paint protection film that I had to have filled in with touch-up paint. And I'll tell you, I don't even live in the desert anymore. I can't even say, oh, that was from when I lived in Arizona. Like, no, the, I bought this, the car was barely ever in Arizona. Just a couple of holiday road trips was it uh, back when I was divorced and I would just drive Maggie the Boxer to my parents' house. But um, yeah, it's it was just urban San Francisco Bay Area driving that, that did all that to my hood. So if you can budget for one thing, I personally would recommend doing some sort of paint protection film on that front end, the nose and the hood of the car. Other people may have different opinions. That is mine. Next caller is Elizabeth from Los Gatos, not too far down the way here, south of San Francisco, uh, who got a an extra surprise when she requested a test drive for Model 3. So here's Elizabeth t- to tell us about it. Hi, Ryan. My name is Elizabeth, and I am calling from Los Gatos, California. Um, First-time caller, long-time listener. Thank you so much for the latest um, podcast um, asking us to go ahead and check on Tesla to see if we can get a test drive in our area. Um, The Sunnyvale, Palo Alto, and Danville in California showrooms are doing Tesla Model 3 um, uh, test drives, and I was able to get one this coming up Thursday. I'm super excited. And when um, the lady called me, she's like, oh, I see that you're eligible to configure your Model 3. And I was like, huh? So <laughs> I've been on, and it didn't say that. So it must have just come up today, but I didn't get an email. So for all you listeners out there, <laughs> keep checking in frequently because I didn't realize that I could even configure it. So two bonuses in one day. Um, keep up the good work, Ryan. I really love listening to you on a weekly basis. Talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you very much for your call, Elizabeth. Now, that has got to rank in your top 10 calls you've received, at least in 2018, maybe even ever. I don't know. I mean, it's like you got a call from the Good News Fairy, cousin of the Tooth Fairy. I would love to hear a follow-up call from you, if you feel so inclined, with your test drive impressions. And I'm also curious, by the way, if you went ahead and ordered and and, uh, what you chose if you did. I should add here, by the way, that a few people have reached out about test drives in their area and, uh, you know, wondering if they're happening. And and the honest but not ideal answer that I uh, have is that I just don't know. It's uh, It would not surprise me at all if test drives are starting close to the Tesla mothership here in the Bay Area, because for pure logistics reasons, test drive fleets can be much more easily and quickly transported to stores here in the Bay Area than they can be anywhere else. But 
Uh, just make sure, all you gotta do is make sure you've signed up for the test drive on Tesla.com Model 3, and those test drives should be happening all over the place this month if they are not already. But uh, Elizabeth, thank you for sharing that story. That that made me smile, just hearing hearing that you got that extra bit of good news during that test drive call. I, I would have been, that would have definitely made my day if that had been me. So I hope it did for you as well. Our next caller is, we got what, three more callers. Let's go to Todd from Massachusetts who wanted to talk about single pedal driving, which is a fairly electric vehicle specific thing you can do, including in Teslas. Todd, go ahead. Hey, Ryan, it's Todd from Massachusetts. I had a quick question about single pedal driving for the Model 3 versus the Model S and X. I have test driven an S and X and I found the single pedal driving amazing, but I've heard there's differences with the Model 3. Do you know what the differences are or can any of your listeners comment on it? I have a Model 3 on order, a dual motor. Uh, it should be here in three to five months. I cannot wait. Thanks for everything you do with all your podcasts. Hey, Todd, though I don't yet own my car, I think I can clarify this for you. And the reason is because I noticed it right away, too, the first time I drove a Model 3. As I've mentioned in the past, I have driven my cousin Patrick's Model S enough. I would say, I bet you I've put a thousand of his miles on that car over the course of the five years he's had it. Anyway, so I've driven it enough to know what it feels like. So the first time I drove a Model 3... I also, I noticed that the regenerative braking felt less intense than it does on the Model S. Now, whether this is a characteristic of the permanent magnet motor uh, compared to the induction motor or just the way Tesla's engineers have tuned the Model 3, I'm not sure. But since you've got a 3D on order, I will mention uh, what I think I must have mentioned on the podcast, but Elon had said this to me on Twitter a bit ago, maybe three, four weeks, something like that. It's, gosh, it's, again, it's been so crazy with Tesla news lately that I I hope you can forgive me if uh, (laughs) I can't even keep track of time anymore. But Elon had said that the dual motor cars will have more intense regenerative braking. I don't know, could we call it heavier braking? I don't know quite the perfect word for that. But so in, in other words, that the higher intensity regenerative braking on the on the 3Ds and P3Ds should make that regen braking feel more similar to the S and the X as far as that single pedal driving characteristic goes. I hope you get your car very soon, Todd. Thanks for calling in. And our last two callers, let's go to Brian in nearby Palo Alto wanted to talk uh, about the differences between performance Model 3 and dual motor Model 3. Brian, go ahead. Hey, Ryan. It's Brian from Palo Alto. I have a question on the difference between, uh, in the configurator, you can now choose dual motor all-wheel drive versus the performance dual motor all-wheel drive. And the price difference is $11,000. So if you do not choose any other options for performance, what do you get for that $11,000? I only see mention of it's one second faster, it's 10 miles per hour faster on the top speed, but otherwise it just says additional upgrades exclusive to performance. So I'm wondering what you get for that 11000 If you happen to know the details uh, other than the speed increase, um, let me know. Thank you. Love the podcast. Well, Brian, this is a source of some confusion, and it might even be fair to say a bit of frustration in the Tesla Motors Club forums right now. I've been keeping my eye on a thread on this very topic. So you definitely get the 0-60 to boost, as you noted. The big one everybody's wondering about are the brakes. Does everyone get the larger sport brakes, or do you have to add the $5,000 performance package for that? We're not quite 100% sure. But even if it is just the speed boost, it's not really necessarily too out there. And what I mean by that, I'm not saying you should like or agree with that pricing discrepancy, but Tesla has done this before. When Ludicrous Mode was first introduced on the Model S P90D, it was a $10,000 upgrade to go from insane to ludicrous at a, uh, and a speed difference of 0.3 miles per hour. So it was a very costly upgrade to get down under three seconds. All right, our last call this week is a fun one. 
It comes from Will in Hawaii, but he's in a very, very special location. A place I can guarantee I've never received a call from before, whether on a podcast or in real life. So, Will, where are you? Hey, Brian. It's Will from Hawaii. Uh, I uh, I saw uh, Elon tweeting, uh, I have no location set up, and I uh, saw uh, his response to you, which prompted me to log into my Tesla account, seeing that I was finally able to order my all-wheel drive. Uh, and I was so happy, so excited. Uh, to be able to order the performance version uh, with the aero wheels and white interior. I was uh, I was uh, kind of expecting to have that black interior, uh, but what a quite pleasant surprise to be able to get the, the white interior and the performance at a cheaper amount. And all this on top of being on my Japan vacation uh, and ordering it, and uh, and now I'm uh, calling you from Mount Fuji, the very top, looking at sunrise. It's quite beautiful. But uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you to the Tesla community. Thank you for Tesla and all the employees. Uh, I love it. I love it. I love this community. I love what you're doing with this podcast, and uh, I'm looking forward to taking my uh, order in two to four months. Good day. Now, Will didn't have a question there, but there are two reasons I wanted to play his call. One, because he's super excited, and I love that. Uh, I imagine there might have been a number of folks who, like Will, went for performance after that price drop happened. And number two, the other reason I wanted to play his call, because that might be officially the most exotic location I've ever gotten a phone call from. Mount Fuji in Japan. I am flattered, Will. I'm flattered that you even thought to call me, of all people, while you were in such a spectacular place. Congratulations on your order. Uh, And that wraps it up for this week's Ride the Lightning Hotline. I wanted to mention real quick, the new monthly Patreon bonus episode is up. That's for the folks that uh, support me on Patreon at the $10 level or higher. So that is all those extra Ride the Lightning Hotline calls that I can't get to during the weekly show. Most of them, they all go in there, and we make a, I make a, an extra show out of it for the Patreon folks every month. So the callers on that episode are uh, the following people. We've got Eric from San Diego is on that show, Ron in Nashville, Matt from Cincinnati, Jay from Australia, Joey from L.A., Eric from Vermont, Nils from Norway, Taylor from Massachusetts, Christian from L.A., Andrew from Ottawa, Antonio from Lake Elsinore, Bruce from Minnesota, and Eric from Australia. All of you are featured along with the topics, of course, that you called in on. Uh, That was a good, like, 45-minute episode. It was a good time to record. So do check that out if you are a Patreon uh, subscriber, Patreon supporter, I should say. It's not a subscription thing, really. It sort of is, I guess. Whatever. Uh, I'll tell you more about it in a second. Let me wrap things up after this little quick break. If you enjoy the podcast every week uh, and you want to support me, I would love it if you would take a look at my Patreon page, which can be found at patreon.com slash teslapodcast. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N. Uh, plenty of information there. It is a, a great way to, to back up my efforts all the time, energy, love, and enthusiasm that goes into this podcast each and every week. Uh, and, and the folks, some of the folks that do support me, the Patreon producers, we've got our newest one. I want to say hi. I just missed this at the cutoff last week. I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly. It uh, goes by the username, or it may just be the name. I'm not sure. Uh, Ketafuki, K-E-T-A-F-U-K-I. Uh, thank you so much. Along with Jeff Bartram, Paul Hussey, DJ Harbaugh, Pete White, Wolfgang Obergen, George Cassiopo, David Brander, Jonathan Wales, Alexi Heft, Logan Willis, Matthew Para, Michael Lester, Robert Maracle, Jason Chalukas, Emotion Rentals, Richard Ouellette, Tim Hyde, Marcus Mayenshine, Lee Sweet, Lars Hoffman, Orion Coates, Peter Chalet, Harold Plug, Kenneth Martin, Michael Callahan, Rome Strack, David Vakil, Ulrich Lassa, Luke A., 
David Kittle, Eric Randolph, David Nondahl, Luke Miles, Stefan Joris, uh, Gabriel Salais, and Jerry and Mary Smith as well. Thank you all so much. Most of you uh, get the podcast through whichever podcast service you like best, whether it's iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, which is in your Tesla, by the way, Spotify. Uh, you can subscribe to the podcast on all of those. That's totally free. It just means it's going to download to you instead of you having to go download it. So do subscribe if you do not do so already. Uh, what else? We've got, ah, of course, abstractocean.com, a great spot to pick up Tesla accessories. For you and your car, whether it's a tempered glass screen protector for the Model 3, center console wrap for the Model 3, uh, the lighting kits, I definitely am interested in that for my car. Those puddle lights have been selling like hotcakes, I'm told. Uh, whether, you know, they've got these, they've got the, the T, Tesla T logo, the original three horizontal line, three logo that I was talking about for the badge earlier in the show. They've got that as a puddle light. There's the new mo- the the actual model 3 logo that they're using the arabic numeral 3 and then s and x as well you can get all of those uh so check those uh, all that stuff out at abstractocean.com use the coupon code rtl podcast at checkout to get 20% off of your first order with them meanwhile immaculate reflections will take care of you in the detailing department if you are interested in that whether it is uh a, a just a thorough wa- uh, wash and wax with clay bar, whether it's paint correction, paint protection film, uh, the Sea Quartz finest uh, reserve ceramic coating, any of it, all of it, whatever you want to do, they're there for you. Check them out at irdetailing.com or you can look them up on Yelp or uh, Instagram at immaculate underscore reflections on, the, on those websites there. The referral code, if you're buying an S or X, you can use my cousin Patrick's referral code to get yourself that free unlimited lifetime supercharging. It's Patrick5008, so you can type in ts.la slash Patrick5008 into any web browser to configure and order your car with that supercharging baked into it. I think that's about it. You can follow me on Twitter if, you're, if you'd like to do that. I'm at DMC underscore Ryan. My email address, I've mentioned a couple times uh, this show, it's teslapodcast at gmail.com. And I do believe, yes, that is it. Thank you all so much, as always, for listening. Uh, that's, that's really all I can ever ask, is that you, you uh, take your valuable time and choose to... Uh, listen to this podcast to uh, to help keep you up to date and and uh, thinking about uh, Tesla news. I, I that's your time is valuable. I appreciate you giving it to me. So uh, another hour or so in the books, I think a little over an hour. I'm Ryan McCaffrey next to a very unconscious <laughs> Daisy the Boxer puppy. I'll see you back here next week. <laughs>